Hello everyone and welcome to Galaxy 89 Cars. Today I'm bringing you an in-depth tour of a Weizmann MF4 GT Anniversary which is currently for sale at Mole Valley Specialist Cars. The MF4 is a two-seater rear-wheel drive Grand Tourer. The Anniversary Edition celebrates 20 years of manufacturing for the German manufacturer, from when their first roadster left their dolman based workshop. Offered in sporty, elegant or style versions, the original owner of this model went for the elegant, so it's finished in alu beam metallic silver. It is also the only one of its kind, being the only right-hand drive manual version out of 30 limited edition cars. The MF4 has a 4.8 litre BMW V8 that produces 367 brake horsepower with 490 Nm of torque. As this car is spec'd with the 6-speed manual as opposed to the 7-speed auto, the 0-62 mph or 100 km per hour time is 4.6 seconds, with a top speed of 180 miles per hour. The car is formed around an aluminium monocoque with reinforced fiberglass body, which means it weighs only 1,390 kilograms. It's 4,230 millimeters long, 1,850 millimeters wide, and 1,190 millimeters high. At the rear, we find its dual exit exhaust exiting quite centrally. So let's see how it sounds. The car is sitting on 20 inch front and rear chrome deep dish forged alloy wheels with Michelin Pilot Sport tyres. And its stopping power is provided by drilled and ventilated discs all around. The Gecko logo comes from the comparison to Weizmann cars sticking to the road like geckos stick to walls. The front is unmistakable with its shield shaped grille, light clusters and additional air vents below. The first thing we find as we move along the side of the car are the GT wing dashes with high standard electric wing mirrors behind. Next are the door handles that need to be squeezed rather than pulled out to release. Behind this the flowing rear arches are introduced to us on the right side by the fuel cap and waved goodbye by the reverse and brake lights. The key is very simple. It features the reptilian logo in addition to buttons for lock and unlock. As previously mentioned, the door handle has a mechanism that needs to be squeezed in to open the door, rather than pulled out. The interior leather here has a very unique name. It's named Light Blue Bridge of Weir. I will now take you on a short POV tour of the interior before going into more detail. The doors are quite basic in their design, and the top portion is fastened with Velcro. Further along with the chrome mechanism ahead is used to release the doors with a small leather handle below.
going into the car, the sill is quite low. It's deep and wide, so getting in and out takes a bit of practice. It is topped with a commemorative plaque. This simplicity is mirrored in the steering wheel, where there are no buttons or paddles, and minimal stalks are found. I thought the driver's information cluster was very different to what we're used to, as the speedo has been removed and placed in the centre console. At the top we start from left to right with an analogue clock, then oil pressure, oil temperature, engine temperature and a fuel gauge. Below is the engine start button. As alluded to before, the speedo and rev counter are near the bottom of the central column, something I imagine might be quite distracting. This car comes with the Becker Sound Concept Hi-Fi with Decca CD player and iPod connectivity. Electric window controls bookend each side of the button cluster, with lighting and de-mist controls centrally and knobs for air conditioning and ventilation above. The cabin features a single circular air vent on each side. The six-speed manual transmission has also been taken from BMW, and due to the deep footwells, the pedals seem like they're at the end of a narrow corridor, to me at least. With the handbrake that can be found to the right of the driver's seat. There are also buttons behind the gear stick that are four from left to right, the dynamic stability control, hazard lights and sport mode. The commemorative seats feature custom embroidery that helps to differentiate this from a standard MF4. They feel hard to get out of due to the high seals. They are firm but actually quite comfortable with soft leather and are adjusted using the knob to the side and bar underneath. The car has quite a few little storage compartments, such as the ashtray behind the gear stick. On top of the central storage area is a commemorative central plaque that has the build number, name of the original owner and signatures from the Wiseman brothers. Between and behind the occupants lies another compartment as well as storage pockets in each footwell. The glove compartment offers quite minuscule storage potential and has a flimsy feeling door, but it's far better than nothing at all, and I have a suspicion this has to do with purposeful weight saving. There is quite a lot of storage behind the occupants, where the boot can be opened using the button on the driver's side. The official capacity stands at 215 litres. and can be extended by pulling up the floor, which is holding the cover here. A quick look at the passenger's footwell to reinforce my thoughts on its tunnel-like nature. The driver and passenger both have non-illuminated sun visors, and between there is a small interior light and analogue rearview mirror. So that concludes my tour of this 2013 Weisman MF4 GT anniversary. Thanks to Mole Valley Supercars who currently have this car for sale. Please find all their details in the description below. Please subscribe for the latest content, and until next time, cheers.